fixed today. And that's where we come up with sort of the modification of the circle now. Now, for the machine that we've been trying to build over here, the four narrow mechanism, we want to break it into a simple sort of north, south, and east, west, west. Recognizing that each one of these things represents the RC value of that particular neuron, and it's independent. Okay. So we have, um, we can actually sort of like say, okay, what is the process to do this? Well, it's either one, right? Or it's either one, one, okay? So in other words, you could have something here and something there, right? Which can oscillate back and forth like that, and that's very, that's very, you know, or you can have a zero case, so there's nothing at all. The one thing, though, is, is that this is just the process map. The phase map, you can wind up looking like this. Well, exactly the same thing, with the RC values, one being extremely short, right? Now, mapping the functions of this, the actual nature of how long a particular neuron takes to process something, onto this, okay, is, um, you got to think about both of them at the same time, and that's, uh, that's a big complex. But this actually allows us to start working with things such as this, where now we have six neurons, okay, in this particular case, we could assume but there's an individual process state, so there's, a state, there's, only, there's only five possible states that this six neuron system could have. But the break even is eight. If you have eight neurons, you have eight distinct process patterns. And the um, interesting thing about that is when you start putting in ten, all of a sudden you start getting sixteen process patterns. So the break even is eight. And just by the vagarities of coincidence, eight neurons gives you eight gates. Eight gates, which, if you look at any quadruped, is all of the gates that are possible. And of course, if you extend the thing to, uh, if you extend the six neurons to, um, say, six legs, right? You can maybe call classic walking gates of any uh, cockroach you have to see, or backward, up and down, even careful walk if necessary to walk across ceilings. Okay? These are the sort of power. This is the sort of power you have. This. The power that we found is not just sort of like taking these things and putting them up side by side by side. That creates a very complex. We stack them. We found these not these process things. We take them like that. Take another one right on top. Continuously link them to two points. Now you have something which is <coughs> gate variation and gate control. So this is the thing that's actually connected right to the motors. Okay. This is the thing which wants controlling this thing, attenuating both left and right. Imagine what that thing would do if all of a sudden there was something on top of it going to like, let's go this way. Now let's go this way. Okay? So this thing, this thing is sort of like the wander function, but it has a quite a large, quite a large process state. If we're doing that sort of thing you've seen cockroaches do, which is to control the insects as well. Every ant you have to see. Okay? We want to move a very large process state. And what happens if you stick something on top of that? Okay. Also tenuously in two other locations. Now you wind up getting this incredible sort of uh, uh, control. Sorry, it, it is a, it's a stratified. It's not subsumption. It is just a stratified control process in a three-dimensional structure. Okay, and uh, this is what we're working on right now. We built completely um, from. Uh, we're working on holographic vision systems using this technique. We know that we can build um, um, continuous voice recognition. Technique. Um, another works like with the chart. <laughs> uh, the real thing is, what other sort of scale possibilities are possible? Well, it's really interesting that it turns out if you scale these things, you can wind up making these fantastic sort of tubes. And the best way to actually make these tubes work at all is to actually have them work in fantastic loops like this, focusing back through some sort of control point. This is where all your sensory information is in the jar. And when you take a look at the phase map on this thing, you end up with something that looks like this. A control point like this. And then of course your spine on the back there. The engineering. Okay. And that's our self That's right. So, no, you have to take four. It's my patent for my science. <laughs> QED. <laughs> this, this is the first time I've ever talked to anyone outside of, um, of my own personal little group here. Um, but, now, but now we're realizing that we've got to get the idea out. Because um, the thing is, is that I'm going, to, I'm going to champion this thing for as far as I can actually take it, right? But if you were to do something like this, okay, what does this thing have to do? Where the hell am I? What am I going to do? What does this thing do? What you saw. This thing would say, go that way. Right? This thing will obey. No matter what. What does this thing have to do to this? Kick it in the side to the spurs. 
Okay, electronics first, and that's exactly what's happening through these little tenuous connections right here. Place of opposite, place of opposite points of our little hextile control. And we'll place them at different points as well based on the sort of creature you might have. We cycle these things up and make snakes, we make slugs, we have to tag skeletons, we make manipulators. When I was a conventional roboticist, the kiss of death was always programming and complexity and remote control. These things are one chip in place in any location, everything from a finger down to a complete robot arm. They scale, they stack.